Welcome to Wonder Coder. Today we've got a fantastic day. You asked for it, we're giving it to you. The very first of the 2016 Barolo releases. We have in front of us, here and over on the bench, samples of Giovanni Sordo's Barbaresco and Barolo Normale and their eight crews. This is just one of the highlights of the year when we see these. Uh, the first time for me was last year when I saw the uh, 2015s. I've now seen a heap of museum stock going all the way back to, I think, uh, the oldest I've tried, I think, is 2004. I know you've tried older. Much older, yep. And today we are doing those 2016s, and again, we have David Rich, Nephead Extraordinaire, with us. David. Thank you so much. Thank for you. No, thank you. And uh, thanks for bringing the booze as well. As uh, this is just just going to be absolutely epic. So for those of you who don't know Giovanni Sordo, and a lot of you don't, actually quite a big history uh, in Barolo and been around for a long time. Maybe David, you could uh, take us through a little bit about uh, Giovanni Sordo. Yeah, yeah. Well, they are. They're, 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 well, they're not one of the best known names. Still, we're we're attempting to change that, but um, they are a, a most fascinating story. Mm -hmm. It's a family, the Sordo family. Sordo uh, is a slang name in Italian. It means the deaf. So that's literally what it means. I saw that when I was on yeah, the translator. Yeah, yeah, and there's a there's a there's a real sordo, there's a river sordo up there. So it's a, it's a it's a well known name, mm. but it is the family name. Mm. The current the current uh, proprietor is is Giorgio Sordo, a really interesting character. Um, not not ever likely to come here and taste with us because he hasn't even got a passport. He spends all his time <laughs> in the vineyard. Uh, he's he's broken a couple not broken appointments with me, but uh, sent someone else in his stead mm. because. Because he's got things to do with the vines, yep. or things that—that's the sort of thing. Funnily enough, that doesn't doesn't offend people like you and me. It yep. it, it, it excites us because we know what they're yeah. doing. They yeah, are impressive. just crazy yeah, yeah. about the yep. vines. So so Sordo uh, as a family, um, they appear to be have been uh, land traders over the last hundred or so years. Yep. And during that time, like a lot of families, they made. Barolo and, and, and Barbaresco and, and the and the varietals Nebbiolo, Barbera and Dolcetto. Mm -hmm. But over that over this last hundred or so years they've been collecting parcels uh, of of the crews of uh, Barolo parcels. to the point when <laughs> where they've got seventeen crew in yeah. in uh, between the eleven communes and they actually release eight eight of those wines as a crew. There'll be another one I believe this year. Uh, giving us a Barolo, a Barolo crew from Barolo Commune, um, so we'll have nine of them. But at the moment, they are, without a doubt, the the the, the largest presenter of of crew, of crew collection in Barolo, yep. and um, that that basically brings them up to today. What makes them fascinating to to us and everybody I've shown these wines to um, becomes you know some some measure towards bewitched by them. I think it's fair to say that these are modestly priced wines from some of the most famous vineyards in all the yeah. area. So yeah. so what's been most what really caught my attention? I mean I've been involved with them for um, in, in a fairly placid way for a passive way for about 15 16 years. Mm. But what sort of brought my attention back to and decided to make me do it myself mm. was that they've got names like Villero, Rocca di Castiglione, <laughs> Mon Privato um, mm. and names that, that uh, 20 years ago, uh, uh, 20, 25 years ago as a developing Barolo person, mm. um, a name like Rivera and Monvillero didn't mean as much as it did today. Um, and, did and, now? and both Jeez. both of those are there, if you like, the the the, the number one uh, of each of their communes, yep. uh, Rivera and Monvillero. Yep. And um, the the point with Sordo is that the, the earlier generations were collecting these 40, 50, 60 years ago. It was so hard, someone it? knew, someone knew where the great wines of even an even an, a, a genre of wines that wasn't you know, it wasn't famous. When I started doing yep. this in 1987, 88, um, you know, Barolo was a, an act of faith yep. by, by us to find people like you that could, you know, latch onto it and, and um, you know, do, do the get on the crusade. But it's been slowly developing. Well, a remarkable family. Well, and, and if, if, if they've, they've done it by genius, having a look at uh, sites and thinking they've got massive potential, whether they've done it 
just to de-risk their business and say, well, if we have sites all over the place, if yeah. frost or hail comes through, yeah. okay. I don't know, but wow. It, it strikes me as, as, as Barola aficionados, because they have yeah. got, there is a, their, 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 their late winemaker, Armando Cordero, uh, who was still on the job up to, to when he passed away two years ago at the age of 92. So they've yep. got this continuity of winemaking of you know, some 50 years. Trans, he, he did 100 knowledge. years of, of their wines. So they have been serious makers yeah. for that long. So, yeah, but it yeah. was a sideline compared to you know, what's, what was obviously their sort of real mainstay of yeah. you know, buying and selling land. And, and haven't we just ended up in, as I was saying earlier, that, that situation of a perfect storm it is we've we've had oh, yeah. an incredible vintage we've got winemakers like the Sordo family who have now got an incredible amount of experience making Barolo and Barbaresco they've been doing it for decades and decades and generation after generation the knowledge has been transferred down they've slowly built up enough cash reserves to really look after the vineyards and, and bring them up to the standard they're at today. So the detail's really going in there. Yeah. So It is a detailed game, isn't it? Yeah. And so we've got almost the perfect vintage with vineyards in the best condition they've ever been in and winemakers with wisdom yeah. and experience yeah. to make the most of it. And so hopefully that's what we're going to see today. Yeah. And so I guess just to, to talk briefly about the differences between 2015 and 2016, we saw how good the 2015s were last year. And, and for those of you who've received your wines and, and, uh, and consumed some, you'll, you'll be uh, in the same boat as us. For everyone in WA, they're coming as soon as the weather breaks. Um, but 2015, a, a warmer, slightly more compressed year, so a shorter ripening period. 2016, a bit cooler and much longer vintage. As, and it's a lot of people saying the longest vintage they've, uh, yeah, they've ever had. Yeah, it, it is a perfect vintage, no question about that. And it, it, that presents perfect fruit mm. to the point where, you know, I, I could probably make good wine in that year. <laughs> well, in fact, if you couldn't make good wine in 2016, go and do something else. Yeah, yeah. Go and absolutely. become a bureaucrat or absolutely. something in the, in the uh, uh, Roman taxation system. Yeah. It, it really did give all everybody the chance yeah. to make their wines yeah. I, I think that the the other point i need to make about sordo is that one of the reasons people have taken to these so readily is that they're not trying to be anything but wines from barolo or barbaresco wines yep. and all wines from those crews they're yep. all made so simply yep. and un Un, uh, pure, they're, they're pure, they're, they're, they're the true sense of natural. Yep. They're, yep. They're, way, they're more or less the way the wines were always made. And vibrant. And, and they've got life and they just, they all, they each speak about the little piece of dirt yep. or the collection of yep. pieces of dirt that they come from. And yeah. it's, um, it, I couldn't have an easier game on my yeah. hands than, yeah. than, you know, yeah. trying to ear bash people about these, <laughs> you know. And then you get 2016 on the top of it. I, I will say that, that you know, we, we um, it, it, ha it has happened with Piedmont a lot. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and we just keep getting good vintages. Mm. And make mm. no mistake, 2015 is so so minimally short of 2010 as a great vintage it, it, it would be a great vintage in almost any other place yep you know so so well, the 2015s the, of, are fabulous well, and all the guys in Barolo are saying this it's it's, it's becoming lesser a matter of, of good and bad years but more a matter of ones that you drink a little bit earlier and ones that you hold on yeah. to a bit longer yeah so we're seeing that come through and I guess what I'm what I'm hoping to see in in 16s as we as we go through this is the impact of that longer vintage and typically when you do get those longer cooler vintages, you get more time for tannin to develop, more layers of tannin. So it, it won't necessarily be perceived as more tannic, but it will it, it, it may have more depth of tannin. Um, with Nebbiolo, you've got the advantage with uh, hang time not necessarily resulting in massive increases in sugar and massive drop-offs of acid they tend to hold their sugar levels at around that point where they're going to make a, a wine of 14 percent and their acids are retained while they're going through that phase of maturing tannins and if the vines have got enough reserves in terms of water and nutrients they'll perform during that extended period of maturation in a, in a cool vintage and, and they should give you something with a bit of usually a little bit more 
perfume, a bit more energy, a bit more vibrancy. Um, but it's, again, a matter of degrees. Um, well, I so. think you've just summed up 2016. Yeah. Yes, that's, they are. They, they, they just show, they, they, because we saw the 2016 Barbara Escorts last year, yeah. you've, got a, you've got a preview as to just that extra vibrance and freshness yeah. that the wines have. Yep. And, and I think with this lineup you'll see today, there's all this seemingly extra fruit, just more, yep. more complex, trying to overhang, yep. but there's a lot of structure underpinning yeah, it. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's just a bigger result, not, not, not as in brawny, just a bigger, longer, the, the length of palettes that you'll see, for example, yep. I think in this lineup are, are extraordinary. Yeah. You know? I can't remember them since 2006 yeah, with that yeah, much yeah. length. Yeah, the flavor. Wow. well, I think without further ado, we should uh, hook into them. So the first two wines we're going to have a quick look at today, uh, we call them the Amuse Bush. We also do have the 2016 Lange. Oh, it's actually not Lange, it's Nebbiolo de Elba, I ne should Nebbiolo say. Nebbiolo de Elba from uh, Roero, yeah, we, which Roero. we looked at last year, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we've got more of it. I've decided to stay if we can lined up uh, 2016. Look. They're just fantastic. And the yeah. Nebbiolo, you could you could cellar this Nebbiolo with that and, and lovely strawberry, dried yeah. strawberry character. Look, and frankly, you're in trouble for not bringing a bottle. Well, but, you know, uh, it's actually sitting on my desk. If yeah. I took a pic, it's yeah. sitting there. <laughs> uh, what do you do these things for, Rigi? Yeah, well, know. I guess we've got magnums and stuff to make up for it. Um, so that's, uh, that's all. Yeah, so, so, so 2016s. Um, Barbaresco. Uh, uh, Barbaresco and Barolo, I suppose, just to, just to quickly contrast them, Barbaresco is always going to be the blazing red fruits and the perfumed, mm. you know, red things, mm. uh, fruits and, and, and lipstick and um, baskets of flowers and that sort of thing, whereas Barolos are almost always darker, more earthy. I actually say more processed. So all the elements mm. of Barolo are of processed things, or you know the, the elements that we talk about. I don't mean as in the wines are more processed, but it's it, it's either more earthy, or uh, they're cooked yeah. fruits, or that. dried fruits, so or more secondary characters like the savory, more secondary savory characters, meatiness, the yeah, sort of truffly kind of characters, those kind of things. Whereas Barbaresco is all about vibrancy, and yep. and, um, and and I'll, I'll make the same pitch. And, and you're not in disagreement that the, the Barbaresco is not the junior to Barolo at all. Mm -hmm. Even though it is, it is released a year earlier because of this life and freshness and, and, and slightly uh, lesser, well, lesser tannins. Um, Barbaresco, the great wines of Barbaresco are easily the equal of Barolo. My, if my, my greatest 10 ever wines are definitely um, divided between five Barbarescos and five Barolos. No, no, not exactly. Is. No burgundies? <laughs> Burgundy. <laughs> What's that? No, nah, no, nah. it does not compute. Haven't heard of it? No, well, no, in okay. fact, uh, it, it, that's dis I don't mean to be disrespectful <laughs> to Burgundy at all. I'm, I, I adore the stuff. Yeah. But for the same reasons people love Burgundy, they, they, they've discovered yeah. this. It's yeah. just like uh, Burgundy with a bit more tannin in, in many and ways. So much personality. But, and, they've yeah. got, and they do. The, 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 the fascination is that they vary from little piece of dirt to little piece of yeah. dirt. Yeah. So Barbaresco in style is vibrant and red fruits and that sort of thing and it's all about zing you don't yep. really notice the, the acidity or oh, sorry you don't really notice the tannin as much yeah uh, a bit like when we talk about the Castiglione section you yep. don't focus on the tannins because the tannins and the acid are working along so nice doing their job they're all about fragrance yep. and and, and um, you know little nuances whereas Barolo will be you know more darker things so yep. so uh, red flowers a uh, basket of flowers, red things, cherry, ch cherry as in fruit, whereas in Barolo you'll see cherry as in liqueur cherry, for example, or dried cherry, uh, chocolate. I'm, I'm, I'm just losing the conversation because I've tasted the 16 roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you're, and I think you're bang on. So it was interesting when we did this comparison last year, 15 Barolo, 16 Barbaresco was a great comparison that showed exactly what you're talking about, that difference between the difference, Barbaresco yeah. and Barolo. We're seeing it again today, but wow, the energy in that 16 Barolo, the generosity and the, and the layering of the tannins in there is, is divine. There's a, a real freshness to that, that, that wine. It, 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 there's almost some 
Yeah, more, more similarities to the Barbaresco this year than the, that. that, yeah, that liveliness, yes, so it's yeah. A, it's really, 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 really playful, and 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 that that wine is what eighty percent Lamora fruit. Lamora, yeah, and yeah. So you know, Lamora is a generous commune. It tends to be quite rich and, and so and raisin and, and chocolate are two of the sort of yeah. things that you you see in Lamora. Yeah, when when I take I tasted these first. Um, on my own last week, yep. give them a week to, to rest, and then I tasted yep. them at home on my own. And uh, I, I was really struck too early in the tasting, thinking, What am I? You know, this is to me, I thought the Brollo was spectacular, and how is it going to be beaten? Well, it probably on balance it wasn't beaten. Yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting as it unfolds because yep. the other wines, the other wines are showing the personality of their terroir, but as a Barolo, the yep. way uh, Bartol Mascarello saw Barolo yeah, as, yeah. A, as the sum of parts, yeah. uh, was e easily able to stand up. It's really a, it's really an interesting, an interesting that, question. That is a divine wine. That is and just something. Put together, it? I think what we're going to be doing is celebrating differences rather than um, calling a preference. Well, I hope, I hope we are. Uh, time will tell as we taste through, but. Look, two cracking wines. I, I've drunk a number of bottles of the 2016 Barbaresco. This one, you told me, has been open for a week. Well, uh, Corobin for now, a month, a month. A month, Corobin for a month. Yeah. And, and well, A, a the Corobin's done its job, and B, uh, the wine has not had an issue with being held on, uh, in, that, uh, in, that, in that state. Um, the Barolo, just, just, just lovely. I mean, that, that is an absolute cracker. Absolute cracker. Good way to start, isn't it? Isn't it? I, I don't even need to move. <laughs> Chocolate powder. Mmm. <laughs> wow. So, look, I think David summed it up, up uh, quite nicely, and I think we've seen exactly what we've... Well, I've mm. seen exactly what I hoped to see. I knew what, mm. what was in the 16 Barbaresco already. I've seen exactly what I wanted to see in the in the 16 Barbaresco. I'll tell you what... I'll tell you st almost straight away what you'll see all the way yeah. through, and if you can cast your mind back to 15s and, you know... Yeah. You know you can still taste these wines a minute after we've last got rid of them, or two minutes. Yep. But the length of flavour yep. is is fabulous. What yes. what um, I can still taste it, mm. Um, mm. and that tell that's length. That's mm. that's greatness. Mm. I forgot to say that we've got a we've got our um, uh, wine decoder tasting revolution sessions, and we've published the first few of those. And we talk about five key elements uh, to to explore when tasting wine mm. and length and depth. If you haven't actually got flavour and length of flavour, then you may as well drink a glass of water. Those both or a have... much, much cheaper wine. Yeah, or a much just cheaper for wine. A, yeah, just yeah. for a shot of wine. But yeah. that's why we get excited about these things, because that's where their pedigree shows. The and personality, um, layering of flavours, layering of tannins, great harmony, some sophisticated winemaking, and sophisticated <laughs> might just simply mean doing very little. Yeah, um, so... and sophisticated drinking. Well, to finish it off. Well, maybe, maybe on your behalf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so look, we, we, we do have um, two beautiful wines. If you wanted to start to get your head around the difference between Barbaresco and Barolo, these are a, a great way to go about it. And if you wanted to test out the differences between vintages and try and get your head around what we've talked about, grab a bottle of 15 as well of the, of the Barolo and you'll see the difference between a 15 and 16 and you'll see uh, the difference between a Barolo and a Barbaresco. It'd be a, it'd be a great comparison to make. You know, just, just three wines and you get so much out of it. Yeah, they are. They're, because they're uncluttered by new oak or, or you know, yeah. hot ferments and, all, and things to pump them up, they're, yeah. they're uncluttered by that. They just simply show Barolo from the vintage. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should, we should Barolo say that's, and Barbaresco. That's, and that's what the winemaking for Sordo is about. It is very simple. It's about... Uh, um, large body, no no new oak influence, um, uh, reasonable uh, levels of maceration that are matched to the weight of the fruit, uh, and uh, obviously they, they play each wine individually and handle it individually. Um, so you, you see a great expression of Nebbiolo mm. fruit, and wow, um, there's an incredible amount of complexity in these wines. Yep. They are incredibly complex. You do, see, you do see in Burgundy, one of the differences in Burgundy is that many, many d domains yeah. make each wine differently. Mm. 
and and I, I didn't sort of really realise that until I actually I, I have been researching Burgundy yeah. to see the differences and similarities. Yeah. Here you've got a producer that's essentially made every single wine we're seeing today. Mm. You know, with the, the, there might be a few days difference when they take the skins off yeah. the off the, yeah. the the juice, but effectively they're they're all the same fifty day. Yeah macerations yep. two months in, in stainless steel to freshen two years in large large completely inert wood yeah two months to freshen in stainless steel yeah, it's a really yeah. interesting regime and it makes sense and they're all made the same yeah a lot of those things make sense i i i would love to see what they could do if they just just went uh, a bit off pissed with winemaking in different sites because you know you hear about they've got they've got Montbelliero and everyone's saying oh you know you can hold much Montbelliero that's that's what you do up there and uh, so it's interesting to see yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that that play out and we're going to see that with, with um, Vietti's Montbelliero when that comes through I think seventeen is the first right vintage. okay well that's a good vintage for that's a good vintage to show yeah yeah but. Um, Back to these. I think what we'll do is we'll have a little little break, reset, and we're going to bring you the first of three buckets. So we're going to bring you the Playful Cruise from Sordo, and that is Rovera and Monviliero. <laughs> 